Let's go jump hunting. What's happening people and welcome to the first ever episode of CJ Works. I am here on a job hunt because I'm going to meet Taran 3D who works in the digital space. He does digital 3D scans. He does all sorts of things to do with the virtual reality space. Now, this is all about going to different sectors and understanding how they got into that type of work. Now me, I am a creative, I am a writer, I am an all round theatre creative and I do lots of different things, but I've also had different career paths. So for me, this is all about finding out where I could potentially have placed myself if I didn't end up in the industry that I am in. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Let's go job hunting. So the reason why I feel it's important for me and for all of us really to get a sense of different kind of industries like this one. Um, you know, when we're talking about the tech space and how things are really moving forward. I think that it's a shame that when we're in school and things like that, there's a lot of kids now that, you know, they, they want to be YouTube stars, they want to go into that digital world, but there's not really a, a handle on how you sustain that kind of work. And of course, it's, it's about the hard work that goes in behind that. And, and so I feel it's important to, to meet with people like Taran who are in that space, doing the groundwork and can show exactly what it takes to get to a certain level, you know, because of course he wouldn't have started off, you know, having all these 3D scanners and all this tech, but he's worked and worked and worked to get to, to this point. Um, and I think that's a narrative that often gets overlooked, the, the aspect of hard work and determination and what that really means. Uh, for me, there's a, there's a clear distinction between being busy and working hard, you know, because a lot of people will say, oh, you know, I'm really busy, but you, you, you're sitting at, uh, on Netflix chilling, scrolling through social media. That's not, that's not, <laughs> that's not working hard. Um, but you could be working hard, probably, you could probably have Netflix on if you want, but you, you, you still do something as well. You know, you're working on whether it's editing your videos, whether it's, you know, researching, all these sorts of things are really important. I think they often get overlooked. So. I'm, I'm really excited about, about being here with, with Taran because I'll be able to get an insight into a world that maybe in the future I will want to, you know, go into 3D design. There's no reason why, you know, I couldn't, couldn't possibly, you know, learn the, the techniques and the skills to be able to do that. But sometimes you have to put one step forward and, and, and get into certain spaces so you can understand what's, what's really out there. You know, I never thought I would be in a room with someone like Taran doing a 3D scan of me. Like that's, that's nuts. Um, you know, how many of us can say we've had a 3D scan of our face? Probably not that many of us, so I'm in a very, very privileged position right now and I'm not taking it for granted and I'm glad that I'm able to share this with you um, and experience this with you. Um, yeah, but well, let's get to it. That's a 3D imaging scanner, so what it does is it throws out um, a shape onto a surface and then it records that shape back in again with, with a camera and then it's able to work out from the distortion in that pattern it's able to work out what the um, what the surface level is and uh, so what I did was I was able to move this around your head you know project that uh, pattern onto your onto your face and for it to read it back in and then it creates a 3d geometry so I'm able to scan your face in and you can pretty much scan any object in as long as it's not shiny because shiny surfaces don't sort of reflect the pattern properly so sometimes you have to dampen them or put some powder on them just to make sure that they don't reflect but uh, we were able to pick you up and it's very useful because what it means is we can actually create a, uh, an accurate representation up to like 0.5 millimeters of, a, of any surface and it's really great for creating digital replicas of products um, and the one that we use is a handheld one so it's more for doing like you know pr small products or people and we can do a full person with that uh, with that handheld scanner. If we were doing environments, then we would use a larger scanner, and, th and these are more expensive, obviously. And they're able to scan whole rooms in, and you know we can get you know really accurate um, scans of uh, buildings and rooms. So 
I have just had a 3D scan of my face. I'm just seeing that on the screen. It's almost like you're looking into a virtual mirror. And I've just never experienced anything like that before. Um, if you can get down to somewhere that does 3D, 3D scanning, um, we actually realized in the space here today there is a 3D printer, but unfortunately we can't get it printed out. But you know, for the future, definitely gonna plan ahead, make sure we can get that 3D model. We've got this sort of like sandbox area where you can test out how all the VR works. It's called like an interaction framework. And what that does is that kind of demonstrates how with VR you pick up objects or pull objects or you can make things work together. Things like guns, things like tools, things like a bow and arrow or pens and pencils. And you can use all these in VR and show sort of connections between items and physics for how physics work in, in the VR environment as well. To be as kind of realistic as possible really. So this is this is like crazy. I feel it's it's like you actually feel like you're in a different world. So what what would you say are some of the the benefits of this? You can put people in any situation you want. I mean, literally, you can put them in the middle of a desert. I could put them in the middle of a um, a concert, a riot. You know, whatever you need for that to train that person. Put them yeah. in front of an engine. Put them in front of a car. Um, and we can recreate any, pretty much any situation. They're actually using them to train surgeons as well now. Surgeons can do like virtual surgery and practice. Um, so it's actually putting you physically in that in that location, in that position, yeah. in that environment. And uh, so rather than you just going through like uh, in theory, you're actually able to go through the motion with your hands. So any yeah, kind of yeah. physical work, it's kind of like putting you through the actual practice of it. I think primarily in the tech space, uh, what attracted me was um, the creativity that's required to produce sort of the work that's there. Like, in it, I, was, I had a massive interest when I was younger in computer games and, and films. So, um, you know, I kind of naturally wanted to be involved in, in that field. So I learned how to 3D model for computer games and uh, learned how to create cinematics and environments. Uh, for, for game environments initially when I was younger. So I taught myself uh, at home and then just started to kind of show my work and build a portfolio. It was quite difficult, like there weren't really many people who you could approach to get help from. Um, and there weren't, there wasn't like YouTube wasn't around at the time where you could go and watch video tutorials. You had to pretty much sort of get hold of the software from college or uni and then just work it out through trial and error, which obviously takes a lot longer. A lot of things that used to seem like it's kind of like a lifetime away or in the future is actually now quite possible. So things like augmented reality and being able to do virtual reality in any space now is, is, um, is possible now. So yeah, it's, it's changed really rapidly. So I came from a time where before mobile phones, so I started when there weren't any mobile phones. Now a mobile phone is more powerful than the main computer that I was using. Obviously access to software, access to processing power, now everyone has access to it. You've got your mobile phone, your average home computer is powerful enough to do, you know, 75% of production tasks. So um, yeah, it's making it easier in that sense. The problem at the moment is that people are expecting more. So you have to know um, more discipline. So it used to be before you specialize in one discipline. I used to be like a 3D modeler and texture, texturer, but now you have to be able to do rigging and animating and then using VR and AR. And then, so all of these sorts of different um, disciplines are sort of um, aligning now in the same sort of direction. So people can jump from one to the other. So I think one thing that a lot of young people who are coming into the industry are struggling with, with at the moment is focus, is where to focus, you know, what is it that they actually want to do. Myself as well, I never really had access to the computer equipment or access to the skills. I think that's the main thing, like, and I was always into sculpture, but there was no opportunities at my school. So I was inner city Handsworth, there's no schools that are teaching sculpture or give you a chance to spend time with a sculpture, you know, with, with a sculptor. Um, you know, there weren't, there wasn't that access to the arts and creativity um, so what you had to do is you had to go out there and find it and do it yourself. And obviously that's always going to be at a very amateur level because you don't have access to those people. And it's only when you get older, you start to work and you start to save up a bit of money and then you start to invest in yourself. 
So, uh, you know, saving up a bit of money and then I would go to uh, sculpting retreats to learn how to sculpt, learn how to 3D model and start paying for courses so that I could start to kind of up my skill in it and, and, and learn it. Whereas, you know, um, other, other places, more affluent areas, they have access to arts and have access to these sorts of uh, skills and areas, which is one of the reasons why I set up XR Academy, which is our training wing because I realized that there is a massive barrier to entry for tech and creative jobs. Because if you live in the inner city, you don't really get access to the skills because there's a brain drain. You see everyone leaves that area who gains those skills. So um, the hope is to try and like bring those skills back to those areas like Hansworth and teach young people that these skills are accessible. And if there's people like myself who have gone through the process and learned it, then we can give those skills back and you know, give some hope back. We never really believed that we could get these type of jobs. Like for us, if you got a job in a factory on minimum wage, that was like a massive achievement. You've already done better than what your parents did. So, um, you know, all these other jobs that sort of existed, all these other technologies, they were like pipe dreams. But, um, but with hard work and with perseverance, you know, we've shown that we can get there and we can do it. Like, and it, like I ne would never have imagined that I'd be able to run my own business and, you know, be doing sort of uh, augmented and virtual reality for like international art projects or manufacturing companies or engineering companies. But I'm able to do so. And I think it's important to go back and, and tell people that it's possible that you can do it, that the opportunities are there. And you just, it's just going to be, a, a, maybe a little bit harder for us, but you know what I mean? We can, we can make it, we can do it. And I, I, one thing I find is that when we go to those areas to teach, it's not so much that they need the skills, it's more they need the aspiration. They need to believe that they can do it. Because a lot of them, when we tell them that you could do this, you could learn this, you know, you could become this, you could become that, they don't believe that they can. And I think part of the, like first struggle is to make them believe that they can. And, and once they can believe it, then it's to give them the opportunity to learn the skills as well. Wow, so what a day. You know, I, I'm so kind of overwhelmed by what I've just experienced. First, my face was 3D scanned and I got to see my whole head <laughs> in 3D. I know it sounds like, you know, you could do that from looking at a, a photograph but it's very different when you're looking on a screen and it's rotating and you're seeing your whole head, you know, at, at one or any given point. So for me, that just made me feel like, wow, what is the, the, the future of technology going to be like? You know, imagine if you were in an accident and, you know, your, your face was a certain way. These technologies could actually help to recraft the face that you have. And I know it has been used in that, in that way. And, I, and it just made me really think of you know, the advancements in technology and how, you know, when Taron was talking about how certain communities aren't able to access it, it just made me think it's really important for us to have an awareness of what's actually available to us because these technologies can be used to, to actually help people. So that was really inspiring to me. And, you know, maybe in another life, maybe in this life, that might be, you know, something I decide to do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for now, I'm, I'm very much just happy to have been a part of that, of that process. Moving forward, we did the virtual reality. Now, for me, that was very strange because I'd never done a virtual reality before. I think a few years ago, I put on a little headset, but of course, as the technology has moved forward and you've got these, these little uh, motion detectors, I think they're called, um, you're now able to really feel like you are in that, in that world. And it did make me question, what are the possibilities for this? Are the possibilities really endless? Or does there become a, a space where it starts to become a little bit weird and a bit distorted and your whole reality is, is a bit warped? But that's one way of looking at it. On the other side, you can look at it as this opens up new doors for people. We hear it said a lot of the time that the jobs that we have now are probably going to be obsolete in the future. So when we're looking at going into schools and, and teaching our you know, young people about what's actually available out there, a lot of the time we're going into the school not really knowing and they actually have, will have the answers eventually. So you can see it one way or you can see it the other. I'm very optimistic about the future because there's reality or the virtual reality and in the future, none of us will ever really know what will come.
This is CJ Works and until next time, let's go job hunting.